Peplink is making some big changes to its lineup of cellular integrated routers, and many of our old favorites, like the Pepwave Max Transit Duo, are being phased out and replaced. We've got all the details of what's up with Peplink's product line now. Hi, I'm Chris with the Mobile Internet Resource Center here to give you an update on Peplink and in particular their lineup of Pepwave cellular routers as well as some of their other things like the cellular antennas they have and access points and the rest of their product line. So they've been making some big changes over the last several months and some of them are just starting to roll out now that are pretty significant including, most importantly, we don't want to hide this to the end of the video, they're phasing away several of our most popular models with our audience, like the Pepwave Max Transit Duo here with dual CAT 12 modems, the Pepwave Max Transit with a CAT 18 modem, the Pepwave Max Transit 5G. Um, all of these have been very popular with our audience and, well, they're not gonna be around for much longer. Now, we have learned from our contacts at Peplink that they are literally running out of the Wi-Fi chips that are kind of central to these devices being able to create a local Wi-Fi network to share the cellular network that they're tapping into, it's to share the cellular connections that they're tapping into. And the manufacturers of these Wi-Fi chips are not going to be making any more of them. They're moving on to newer models and newer parts. And you know, basically, once the current inventory, the current stash of parts is gone, they're gone. And Peplink can't build these anymore. The parts just don't exist. So to deal with that, they're actually going to be kind of transitioning the product line. And that means the current ones that are out in the channel and inventory, they're when they're used up and sold, they're gone. And they're going to be instead have some new products that are coming out that have some significant downsides to replacing these. So first off, they're gonna have kind of like replacing the existing Max Transit with two new devices called the Max Transit Core and the Max Transit Pro E. Now the Max Transit Core is a lot of the same internals as this right here, as the, the existing Max Transits, but it has a different chassis, a different physical chassis that has two additional Ethernet ports. Um, one of those Ethernet ports can provide power over Ethernet to power something like an external access point. And that is important because you might really want to have an external access point because there is no more Wi-Fi built into the Max Transit core at all. So no Wi-Fi chips, they're eliminating the Wi-Fi entirely, it has no Wi-Fi. You can't do Wi-Fi as WAN, you can't create a Wi-Fi LAN unless you hook it up to something else like an access point. So that is a pretty substantial shift in the product line, um, but the core is still could be useful for people who are looking for upstream connections. Now there's going to be just initially just one model of the core with dual category 12 modems, just like the Max Transit Duo Cat 12 that has been one of our all-time favorite routers. Um, but well, you're trading your Wi-Fi for two additional Ethernet ports, one PoE, and well, you're also getting a price increase in the bargain. So for example, the Max Transit Duo Cat 12 was an expensive router at $999. The Max Transit Core is $1199. So a 20% price increase for, unless you really, really need those extra Ethernet ports in the PoE, a decrease in functionality. Ouch. Now, the other new product that they're having to replace the, the old transits is called the Max Transit Pro E. And this is basically um, probably taking the last of their inventory of all the Wi-Fi chips and taking the core, so you know, the same chassis with the extra Ethernet ports and the PoE, putting the Wi-Fi back into it and giving it the same Wi-Fi capabilities as the Transit Duo. So there'll be the Max Transit Pro E will be dual CAT 12 modems. Um, it will have Wi-Fi 5, 802.11 AC, just like the old Transit Duo, and it will have those extra Ethernet ports from the core. So basically, it's just a Transit Duo with extra Ethernet ports, but it will be costing 30% more at $12.99. And because the chips are limited, it will be kind of a limited availability product. It will be in the product line until the chips run out. So. The basic advice that comes with this is if you've been eye, had your eye on you know, getting a Max Transit Duo or a Max Transit Cat 18 or any of these, get them now while you still can before um, the, the current inventory runs out and the new models are out. They'll be shipping late November or sometime in December. So 
That's the big change happening to those product lines. Now, the existing, the remaining inventory of the Max Transits, they've actually also raised the price of them, the suggested price of them, to um, $11.99 to better reflect, you know, for the Transit Duo, they're, now the official price has gone from $9.99 to $11.99 to better kind of ease the transition to these new models. But fortunately, at least at the moment, most of the online vendors that have inventory left are still honoring the old $9.99 price. So that's, you know, get the deal while you can. Now, there's one particularly big hole in the Peplink product lineup that will be emerging is going forward, the, the Transit Core and Pro-E are just dual Category 12 modems. Um, these Category 12 modems, exactly the same as in the Transit Duo, are great, good performing things, but they do not support T-Mobile's um, 600 megahertz band 71. So if T-Mobile coverage is important to you and T-Mobile's longest range coverage is on band 71, none of the new models will support band 71. The outgoing, um, you know, basically being discontinued versions of the Max Transit, there was the Cat 18 version and the Max Transit 5G both had this band 71 support. So if you're itching for T-Mobile compatibility, the Cat 18 version, single modem Cat 18 version of the Max Transit, which is just $749 has not actually had a price increase because it's running into very, very short stock. That is the one to get while you still can. Now, what does this mean kind of the longer term future going further out? Well, you know, certainly Peplink is not going to leave this kind of void in their product line for long. Um, we expect sometime in 2022, hopefully the first half of 2022, there will be a real next generation Max Transit. And we're kind of guessing that based on you know, Peplink's kind of more lower end product line, the Max BR1 has just begun an evolution to, this is the Max BR1 Pro 5G. So we did a video and story on this um, when it was first announced uh, back in May, and then we've actually also got another hands-on video that's on the channel that you can check out. This has just started shipping, and this is um, the first kind of you know, uh, more mainstream uh, version of Peplink's routers that has Wi-Fi 6, 802.11ax, um, 5G, uh, Qualcomm X55 based modem, a next, so next generation modem, and a whole new CPU architecture and routing engine that is overall can basically run circles around the Max Transit lineup. So the Max BR1 Pro 5G, just a single modem, is out now, is now shipping, and it's kind of pricey at $14.99. So we're expecting that some of the core technology and features of this will make its way over to the Max Transit line sometime next year. Um, but if you do want a Max Transit, and particularly if you want some of the capabilities of the Max Transit this year, well, now is the time to jump while you still can. You know, to, to you know, flesh out this video, there's a few other things that have been new from uh, uh, Peplink, some developments over the past year. Uh, one, you know, we've covered in the past, actually going back a year, the, the Pepwave Puma line of uh, antennas. And uh, earlier this year, they came out with a Puma 421. And these are antennas that are really, really great for RVs, dome-shaped. The 421 has four cellular, for, great for 4x4 four four MIMO, two Wi-Fi, and a GPS. And um, you know, overall, it's been a really impressive antenna. But well, some, some news for you is the Puma is going extinct. Peplink has gotten rid of the Puma from its product line. But this case, in this case, it's not because of a parts shortage. It's because of, we suspect, a trademark dispute, and they just had to rename it. So if you've seen all past coverage about the Pepwave Puma line of antennas, they are now just called the Pepwave Mobility line of antennas. And the Puma like 421 has now been renamed the Mobility 42G. So four cellular antennas, two Wi-Fi, and the G just indicates the GPS antenna. So that's the their line of vehicle-based antennas. They've also rolled out what had initially been announced as the Stingray line of maritime antennas, are now just the uh, maritime antennas. So they've got a lineup of 2x2 two two and 4x4 four four marine mount antennas, a really tall one that's 4x4 four four that really well suited to a marine environment, super harsh environment, use on a boat. Um, on paper, looks to be a really fabulous antenna. We'll probably be getting one of those in hands-on at some point. And they you know, have what was going to be their hummingbird line. They decided to avoid any more trademark risks. They're calling that the IoT line. This is a line of antennas primarily for Internet of Thing installations, but might be of interest to certain audiences. We have all of those covered on the gear guide at the Mobile Internet Resource Center. So Pumas are gone, Mobility's in, check out those antennas. We've also 
you know, been playing with them. It's impressive, impressive design. Now with all these shifts to the Pepling product line and stuff, and, you know, they've long been a favorite of ours, but they've also been frustrating with certain missing features that we really, really wish some of their routers had, particularly their mainstream, non-enterprise focused, uh, mega expensive models. And this, you know, doing all this write up for this uh, article had us thinking, what would be our dream um, Peplink router for RVers and cruisers? And something like the Max Transit BR1 5G kind of sort of gets there, but is missing any sort of future proofing and expansion in the sense that for some reason they leave off a USB port. So there's no ability to do USB tethering to add a second cellular connection using a smartphone, another hotspot, and even just using Pepway's own Max adapter, external USB connected uh, you know, Max adapter 5G would be a great way to add a second 5G radio to something like this. But the BR1 line and the Max Transit line so far has never had a USB port to make these routers have that kind of extra flexibility. So one huge wish for Peplink is put a USB port on any on anything and everything that you sell. If you have great support for USB tethering, you know, put it on all of your products and it'll be taken advantage of. Um, another Peplink product that we've you know kind of been impressed with the design of is like the Peplink HD1 dome. So Peplink HD1 dome where you have a dome on the roof. This has been popular in the marine installations where the dome has the integrated cellular radios. And then you could actually have an internal component called the SIM injector that is an ethernet switch and has SIM slots. So you don't have to climb to the roof to change out your plans. All your plans are inside. It is a really, really great architecture, but there's no Wi-Fi on either the inside or the outside component. So uh, a next generation HD dome setup with long range Wi-Fi WAN integrated into the dome so you can talk to Marina or campground Wi-Fi from the dome, not just cellular. And inside um, in, the, in the next generation SIM injector, put Wi-Fi and put USB ports for tethering. So you can have a secondary, you know, put a hotspot to use inside if you don't want to use the connection outside or want an easy upgrade path. Now the, the parts are there, Peplink just needs to put them together in the way that is appropriate for our audience. Um, we would love to see you know, all of these things, you know, the Wi-Fi 6 of the, the Transit um, Pro 5G, we'd love to see the dual modems of the uh, Max Transit Duo. Um, we'd love to, to see dual 5G radios in a non-extremely high priced uh, option. So that's where the USB port could come in to give that sort of redundancy. And yeah, just, we're watching you Peplink, please put out our dream product sometime because it would be ideal for so many uh, RVers and cruisers who have demanding needs and uh, want to uh, be reliant on these products. So, so just to wrap up, you know, the these sort of supply chain issues that we're seeing cause such a disruption to the uh, Peplink line of routers is well, it's it's affecting the entire uh, electronics industry um, across the board, from giants like Samsung and Apple all the way down and. Particularly when the giants are struggling and fighting over parts, smaller companies are going to have an even harder time and are being forced to raise prices and limit availability just because there's so much demand in the market right now and production capacity for chips is not growing fast enough to keep up with it. And it might be, as you know, some analysts say, it might be a year or two before supply and demand get back in whack. So keep this in mind as you're planning your cellular purchases and thinking about the technologies that you want to buy, um, you know, normally in the past it's been, you know, pick what you want and order it. But now pick what you want and, oh, it might not be available. Uh, there might be waiting lists. There might be hard to find. All of that. Now, we did, we were able, and we got permission from uh, Peplink to give our mobile internet aficionado members of our site a heads up about this product transition. Uh, a month ago. So a lot of our members had a, a, an early warning that they might need to start planning their shopping soon to get their hands on all of this stuff. That was just one of the uh, ways that we were able to um, support our members. And if you are interested in this sort of uh, early access to information and potentially getting access to um, discounts on hardware and stuff as well, we encourage you to check out joining the Mobile Internet Aficionados. You know, we are not sponsored, we don't, aren't driven by affiliates, and it is our site members that make our sort, this sort of in-depth coverage possible. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. 
you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.